Welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this video we're going to show you how to fix lens issues with the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Welcome if this is your first time to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way each and every time we do come out with new video content, you are kept the most up to date. Now, if you've seen our recent Who Rocks the Box videos, we unboxed a Nintendo Virtual Boy, one of the most exciting pieces I've added to my collection in recent years. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you check out our video right up there that discusses how this came out of the box. And was it what was exciting for me about this was the fact that I was able to purchase it from the original owner, Ryan. Now, I've played quite a bit of it and I've really enjoyed it. The problem is I started noticing some interference and flickering, specifically in the right eye. I did some research and found that, well, the Virtual Boy is kind of known for having some lens, lens issues over the years, especially due to the ribbon cable design and how it wraps inside the console itself. Being a fix-it kind of guy, I want to know, how could I fix it? And I looked up all sorts of issues that people have had with the Virtual Boy and their solutions. And what I found repeatedly was that people were taking and putting their lenses on a cookie sheet and throwing it in their oven. That's a bad idea on so many different levels. There had to be a better fix. The issue, which we'll cover in a few minutes, has to do with the way the ribbon cable itself attaches to the board. I'm not throwing electronics in my oven. That is bad on so many different levels. But I had an idea for a fix that basically reached back to my RC experience that I had with this bad boy here. And let's throw everything on the bench. I'll tell you what this is, how it works, show you how to take everything apart, how to fix it, and put it back together. Let's get started. So as this is a system that you can't get repaired anymore and may have a hard time even getting in the first place, you wanna be very careful as you're going through any of these steps. If you don't feel confident, don't do it. Try to have someone who can and is more technically um, astute do this. So we're going to disconnect the controller and power supply and remove the system from the stand, setting the stand aside. Next up we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this bad boy here. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 potential screws. And we're also gonna pop out our copy of Wario Land. Now to make this job a little bit easier, I am actually using you know, the security bits here that I can just use in my Hitachi drill driver that I like to use. And let's start our removal process. Uh, what's happening here is I'm actually hitting the end of my drill driver on that bit right there. So I will actually have to use my regular handheld to be able to get this out. Assuming probably the same on that bad boy there. Now I may be able to do this without having to take out all those screws, but we'll find out in a few moments here. So you guys can hear as I'm doing this, the clutch, basically making sure that I'm not damaging the plastic or any screws here. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six that we've removed. Let's see if that's enough or if we still have to take off more. That may actually do it for us. It'd be really nice if it did. I'm gonna set that other screw aside so it doesn't get lost. Pull out those little, oh, those are the speakers, so you wanna make sure that you don't lose those guys. You know what we're gonna do just to be on the safe side is we're gonna just undo all four of those, or all six of those screws. Better safe than sorry here is kind of where I'm going with this. Toss all these screws in here. They all look to be the same length as well. And that actually does make it where it comes apart a hell of a lot easier. So yes, do that. So the pieces that we are looking at here 
is this piece here and this piece here. So, and you need to make sure that you keep track of your left and your right. It does matter. You may want to inspect your lenses at this time, see if there's any dirt or fingerprints. Good time to clean those up here. These actually look pretty decent. Slide the lens back in. Loosen that connector there. Or does it just pull out? Just pulls out. And now what we're going to need to do is to unscrew those two screws right there. So there's two screws, one right there and one right there that we'll need to unscrew next. So we're gonna change our angle a little bit just so we can see this a little bit easier. So I have my dynamite screwdriver here and we're just going to back these bad boys out and take them out all together. On the bottom one, the one down here, it looks like it's connected to like an antenna or a ground wire or something. So you wanna be careful that you don't damage anything, of course. Use a slightly smaller screwdriver here just so that I can get around that corner a little bit. Pop this bad boy out, making sure we don't lose the screw. There, I'll set the system itself aside for right now. So this is the cause of all of our problems. This is the, the actual lens itself. And what happens over time is this solder joint here, this cable, fatigues out and eventually starts pulling away from the board. So what we need to do is essentially reflow the solder that's connecting this connector to this board. Now some people like to throw the assembly into an oven to reflow. I'm not a fan of that because you need to apply direct heat here. So what we're going to utilize, I'm gonna just set this aside very gently for right now because I don't want to damage it. What we're going to utilize is something out of the RC world. And this here is called a covering iron. And basically what this is designed to do for larger model planes, um, it has like a mylar film skin on the outside of a balsa airframe. The, uh, the covering iron, basically what it does is it makes that or helps that covering fit better around the, the skeleton essentially of the model. Now this one is from Hangar 9. I'll have a link down below to where you can get this one. And the cool thing about this is the fact that it will allow me to apply very direct heat just to the spot that I need. And this does have a dial right here for setting the temperature. I'm gonna go for uh, about 350 degrees. Actually we'll go for about 325. Now the thing is I don't want to apply direct heat with this part is called the shoe. So what I'm gonna do quite honestly, and they have these available for a couple of dollars, but I'm just gonna use a sock and they cover, call it covering socks. And I'm gonna just slip the iron right into this. So this way what it's doing is it's keeping that metal from directly contacting that piece there. Now the actual covering socks fit the irons a hell of a lot better. Um, but since I don't do this very often, this will work for my needs. Now the other thing I'm gonna do because, and this is just because I don't wanna melt my surface here, is I just have a cutting board and this is designed to handle you know, a bunch of hot temperatures like when you are cooking and carving. So we're going to plug our covering iron in here and what we're going to do is we are going to wait for this to heat up and we are going to apply very direct heat to this joint. So as you see here, the lights are going up. That means that it is, first of all, powered on and it'll let me know when it is ready to utilize, essentially. Now, the other thing that I have to use here, just so you can see what the temperature that this gets up to is, is I do have a digital thermometer. So while I'm waiting for this to finish heating up, what I'm gonna end up doing so with the lens here, I've got a gap between the edge of the lens and the PCB. So I'm gonna actually butt it up against here and I'm gonna apply heat to the iron going this way. So as we're getting close, the nice thing on this too, it's actually green lit now showing us that we're good as far as temperature goes. Always treat these covering irons like they are on and they are hot, the same thing as a soldering iron. I'm going to actually do it this way just because I don't want to uh, have my hand too close. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the foot down here and I'm just going to hold it. 
and we're getting there. The main thing is you want that cable to wind up being flat. And I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure. Um, what you're seeing, like the red on my finger right now, is just I'm at an awkward angle for how I have to hold this in relation to where everything else is. I'll flip that over for a second and just kind of take a look at our joints. Things are definitely looking better. Now I know some people have come at it from this side too. I'm good with just doing this. And again, I'm just letting the weight of the covering iron hold everything down. And those connections actually look a lot more secure. There's a lot, the, the color on the pins is a lot more uniform, I would say. It's very hot, so be careful while you're doing this. Um, we'll hit it again. I figure we've had it on maybe a minute, minute and a half at this point. And there you can see that is mostly flat at this point. What I'm going to do here, I'll set this aside, and we're going to swap this one out with the other one, and you're going to see me fast forward through that one. Now that we have both lenses done, what we're going to do is reassemble them and put them back in the system. I've already got the left eye back in, now we're going to do the right. A um, couple things you want to make sure of. I've seen pump, some people that recommend using tape around here to act as a strain relief. Don't do that. Tape has an adhesive which can gum things up. Don't do that. If you want to wrap anything around here for a strain relief, use what's called silicone tape. It binds to itself, so you don't have to worry about glue and gunk getting in and ruin your connections over time. So we're gonna get everything lined up here, and there we have it. And grab our screwdriver, and always untighten first before starting to tighten your screw back into the boss. You don't want to recut these threads. You want to thread back into them. Do not tighten them down all the way until you have both screws installed. That way you are ensured that you don't reinstall the lenses cocked at an angle. Now one thing, I can feel the heat coming off. That covering iron is still on, but it's turned down to cool off. So you want to be cognizant of that. Don't go ape on these things, just tighten them down till they stop turning. I like tightening that one first and then coming back and then tightening this one up. Slide this back into the connector, making sure we don't damage any of the other components on the board. There we go. You should see when you're doing this side, most of the orange disappear in the connector itself. We're going to put the speaker back here. And now we'll finish buttoning everything back up. Back on here. Don't force anything as you're reassembling. If it's not fitting, take a look. There's a reason why. There we go. Now while I am more than happy to use my Hitachi to take everything apart, I'm going to use my hand uh, security tool to put everything back together. If I was doing this on like a Super NES or a GameCube or something, no problem. I've waited far too long to have one of these in my collection to risk screwing it up. Okay, now we need to get the other screws installed. We're going to put on the viewfinder. Next we'll connect the stand. Readjust the angle. Put our copy of Wario Land back in. Still learning on this thing. Label side up. And with that we can reconnect our power supply here. It's time to check it out and see if this did its thing. I know it's kind of hard to see here but that's the left lens that was giving me distortion before. You do get the, refle the refresh flicker but man it looks so much better than before. I am proud to say that the covering iron trick works.
So as you can see, using a covering iron provides the direct heat and pressure that we need to that solder joint to fix this in a more permanent basis. And it keeps you from putting electronics in your oven. Whoever, stop doing that. These are relatively inexpensive, under 20 bucks, and if you ever have to do it again, you will have it available for your disposal. The other thing this is good for is if you use that indoor, like that Klingon, not like that Klingon, I protest, I am not a merry man. But the Klingon style window installation, it's a good thing to kind of take everything and smooth it out. Covering irons really work well for stuff along these lines. Um, this works for me. I'm pretty sure it'll work for you. So go ahead, if you have a Virtual Boy with issues, I would definitely recommend this fix. The only thing, I just ran out, I couldn't find my silicone tape. Never use electrical tape on something like this. Always use something like silicone tape that bonds to itself, uh, just like this stuff right here, and you will be much happier in the long run. But these are just my experiences. Let me know, what kind of issues have you run in to over the years with the Virtual Boys? Headaches and eye strain doesn't count. What sort of technical issues have you run into? Let me know down in the comments. Do you have one? Have you ever wanted one? Uh, if you also have any other questions about this mod, the covering iron, the disassembly and reassembly process, anything gaming in general, as always, feel free to email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can also hit me up on my Twitter account at Rocksolid Studios or over on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions. We answer all of our comments, messages, and emails on all platforms, so make sure that you go ahead and hit us up if you do have a comment or question. If you want to help support the channel too, make sure you check out our Patreon page page at patreon.com slash rock solid for just a dollar a month you can help support the channel it gets you early access to all of our videos exclusive video content and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me too over on patreon.com slash rock solid and finally if you like the design of the shirt and everything you can get very similar ones over on our teespring store just go to teespring.com i'll have all the information down below where you can visit that we've got uh short sleeve shirts we've got uh tagless shirts we've got sweatshirts for it's like 90 degrees out right now, but thinking later in the year, uh, we have lots of different shirts that if you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and do that too. And finally, like I mentioned at the top, make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification. That way, each and every time we come out with reviews, how-tos, tutorials, live stream, anything along those lines, you are notified on your phone, in your email. You're a variety of different ways that you get notified uh, when you do subscribe and hit that bell notification. It helps the channel out a whole lot too. I'm so thrilled that my Virtual Boy is now working the way it really should be. And while I was having the issue with the right lens, I did the both, uh, the right and the left at the same time, and it works like a champ. I have some more games to play. In fact, I have, huh, Wario Land for the Virtual Boy. This game is awesome. I really wish they would bring this back or give it a proper sequel on the 3DS, because, you know, the 3DS is still a thing. Thank you all for watching as I try to struggle to get the cartridge back in. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.